Tensors are the building blocks of the major concepts of physics and mathematics. Today, machine learning, deep learning, data science, all are based on the concept of tensors. But how to learn tensors? Where to start with? What are the best books to study tensor? Is tensor difficult to learn? Are you scared of learning tensors? Don't worry, they are nothing to be scared of. In this video, I am going to answer all these questions and clear up all your confusions regarding tensors. I am going to give you a complete study guide, a learning outline and the best books to learn tensors with a very very critical approach and a detailed understanding on the books and their concepts. My name is Shonak and you are watching this video on my channel Physics for Students. Welcome to this video How to Learn and What are the Best Books on Tensor Calculus. Uh, let us first see what are the topics that we are covering in today's video. So first we will learn why will you at all learn tensors. I mean to say what is the need. Are really tensors difficult to learn which is a kind of a idea most of the students have. What are the mathematical prerequisites or the preparations that you need to have before learning tensors? What are the books and resources? What could be the best book for you? The summary of each and every book and how to get those books. Well, this is more or less the uh, topics that we are covering today and we will start first with the concept of why will you learn tensors? Now, before I go ahead in giving the books and their understanding, I would like to tell you most of the students in universities and colleges whom I talk or I meet, uh, I find that they lack the motivation to learn tensors. And that is the prime reason that people really fail to understand tensors. It seems to be something really difficult and people are really demotivated to learn tensors. So in this part of the video, I'm going to give you an answer that why and what is the practical objective of learning tensors and how it makes life very easy. Okay, first I would like to tell you that the original of the word tensor comes from the Latin word tender or tensor, which means basically to stretch. So it relates to something that are related to muscles of body and it renders its tension, describes linear relations on scalars, vectors, matrices and other algebraic objects. So the root of the word tensor, which is coming from the Latin word tender, it seems stretching and you will see that in general theory of relativity, uh, solid state physics, continuum mechanics, the word tensor relates to something related to stretching. Obviously, it is not stretching your hand or stretching your shirt or pant. It is something which is related to stretching of coordinate systems or some kind of a measurement which we will encounter in the video. So as you see that tensors can be defined as an algebraic object which has got multidimensional arrays, mathematical objects that can be described to have certain special physical properties and here is a lucid definition from a physical perspective a tensor is some quantity which really does not depend on the coordinate system like the velocity of an object or the distance between two points. It can be transformed in the coordinate system and the representation that it provides of the quantity will change but it is still the same quantity. So in, 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 a, in, in a simple form we can say that we know vectors which have got magnitude and direction but tensors are something which have got magnitude and direction and the plane on which the force or anything which is acting. So remember this is a very basic definition of tensor because the objective of this video is not to teach you what is tensor rather to give you a study guide, a guideline and to lay you out what are the books of tensors. So this is a kind of a basic, basic definition. Now if we go back a little bit to the history of tensor, it started with Augustin Louis Cauchy who used uh, the Cauchy stress tensor. It was first coined by William Rowan Hamilton who first coined the term tensor using on quaternion. 
We all know that tensors have been widely used by this great mathematician Bernhard Riemann and he used it on Riemann curvature tensor and it was also used on Joshua Gilbert Gibbs in 1884 which he called as an indeterminate product. There are further mathematicians, historians, physicists I am not covering because itself tensors history will take a long time but this is just to let you know in quick what it is actually about. Okay, so the concept is that as I was telling that it relates something to change, something it is changing. So here is a simple picture as you can see that we are measuring the vector in this line and when it changes uh, the coordinate system it is being rotated but still the measurement of the vector remains the same. So from flat uh, space or space time when we move to curved space time as you can see the red arrow is changing so we also need to register those changes of tensors from flat to curved space yet the vector or the measurement will change uh, will remain the same but the changes will happen based on certain rules. So here is a typical example of the stress energy momentum tensor where you can see the forces are acting on a magnitude on the direction and it has got a plane because the cube has got different planes. Even we can use the F equals to MA, write it in this format which I am not expanding can be written up in a tensorial format. So we can uh, summarize this as we need a mathematical object which will transform as per a set of rules and vectors will remain the same but the components of the vectors will change. So this part of the video I just try to give you an answer a kind of a very layman's definition not going mathematically that what is tensors and why will we learn and what it actually helps us. In the next part of the video right now we are going to look into some of the practical applications of tensors so that we can really understand what it is. So in engineering as we saw in solid state physics on a, on a steel beam etc there are different kind of stresses and uh, shear stress, uh, normal stress etc which happens so we need tensor theory in engineering. Diffusion tensor MRI, well I am not going to explain this, this is a typical very technical uh, kind of a tool which is used in making MRI scans by doctors where the spread of the heart or a particular body is being spread out in a diffusion mode and the tensor analysis helps us. Uh, we all know that Einstein field equations in general theory of relativity uses tensors widely and I have got a lot of videos on tensors and its usage in general relativity. You can check it out on my channel Physics for Students. Go to general theory of relativity playlist and you will find it. Fluid mechanics, Riemannian geometry, these are all very much using tensors. You know how Riemann used tensors in the Riemannian geometry of curved spaces. Now this is something interesting which is called tensor flow. Now tensors are actually you know the basic data structures in tensor flow which is a language. Tensors represent the connecting edges in any flow diagram which is technically called the data flow diagram and tensors in computer science I mean to say in tensor flow are multidimensional arrays and this is the sense in which tensor flow operates on tensors. We also see deep learning and machine learning which are related to tensors. So in machine learning or we can say data processing, a tensor appears to be a simply uh, defined as a multidimensional array. Uh, you can uh, think for example a three-dimensional array would be 1000 video frames uh, which has got around 640 to 480 pixel size and a usual n times speed data matrix is an example of a 2D tensor according to the definition. So these are, I would say, different uh, practical usage. So definitely if you are going into data science, deep learning, if you are an engineer, if you are using computer graphic images, if you are into medical science, even if you are in theoretical physics, tensors are the heart and you cannot skip tensors and you need to have a solid understanding. So uh, this part of the video explains about tensors, why will we learn, what are the practical usage and you can see a more or less basic understanding of what is a tensor. Now the question arises that when we are going to learn tensors, shall we jump directly into the concept of tensors, the mathematics etc or shall we know the mathematical prerequisites. So first question which arises is that so much of mathematics does it make tensors difficult? 
So my straight away answer would be no. And the reason is that it has been represented by various books, notations, complex analysis and understanding that it comes to be a very difficult subject. But I can tell you they are very interesting and they are absolutely not difficult. So you understand that it is basically if you read the history of tensors which I have covered in my general theory of relativity, you will see that tensors actually arose due to some need. Crystal crystallography or the measurement of crystals first was the pioneer in terms of defining tensors. So how it is possible that we discover a mathematical tool, yet the mathematical tool is difficult. We have to bang our head and we have to fly away or run away from those things. Definitely not. So a mathematical tool is meant to make the life easy, not to make life very difficult or complex. So that is one of the reason that tensors are not difficult. It is just by uh, getting hold of the right concept, right books and right approach, it makes it difficult. Yes, there can also be a reason that abstractness and visualization makes tensor difficult because we cannot see really tensors, but only we can perceive its ideas and how it helps us in calculation. So the answer is definitely a no. This is, uh, I think, will serve as a motivation for students who think tensors to be difficult. I have never found tensors difficult and now tensors are being widely used in the recent computer science and data science. So definitely, it, if it would have been difficult, how human beings would have used it. The next part of the video, we will see that uh, shall we directly jump into tensors or we need something where we need to learn the mathematics or we can see the prerequisites of learning tensors. So in this part of the video, I would be talking in brief about what is the mathematical preparation that you need to have for tensors. Now, I would like to approach this part of the video in two ways. First is that tensors used in physics and tensors used in pure mathematics. Now, if I'm concerned with physics, then what we need to know is, are these things. Linear algebra, obviously one of the most uh, important and it is almost a kind of a mandate. We need to know multilinear algebra, multivariable calculus, I mean to say partial differential equations, vectors and vector calculus, curl, divergence, gradient, Laplacian, non-Euclidean and differential geometry. These are the two parts which makes uh, tensors a little bit difficult, but don't worry, I will give you a complete chart where you won't find any difficulty. If we go into pure mathematics, then we need to learn a little bit of linear algebra, obviously multivariable calculus, measure theory, differential geometry, as well as topology. Now, it is, it is totally up to you whether you're approaching tensor as a pure mathematician or you're using tensor as a tool into physics or in data science. So now what I would like to tell you is that having laid down basically physics or in general um, general applications of tensors, I would like to tell you that if you're going to learn or get a mathematical preparation before learning tensors, what are the books and how you should go and approach the prerequisites of tensors? First of all, it is absolutely a must. I mean, so it is not, I am telling for years and years, mathematicians and professors have told you need to have a solid grasp over linear algebra. If you want to learn linear algebra, I can tell you, you can go to my channel Physics for Students and you will see that in my playlist of quantum mechanics, there are a lot of linear algebra which I have covered. Now the question is that why quantum mechanics? Because the mathematics of quantum mechanics demands a complete understanding of linear algebra. So before beginning my uh, videos on the physics of quantum mechanics, what I have done is that I have laid out certain a very basic linear algebra which you can go and check in. I am sure you are going to like it. These are pretty simple and you can just quickly run through the linear algebra playlist. Okay, the next thing is that there are several books like Gilbert Stang's Linear Algebra, Linear Algebra Done Right and Linear Algebra by George Shilov and the famous Sir Glang's Introduction to Linear Algebra. These are four very good books very clear, precise and well illustrated books, you can pick up any of them. So this clears the concept of how to learn linear algebra and what could be the right choice of books for you to learn. We move on to the next part which is which is called the vectors. 
Now I have already covered, you can see there are around 16 videos, I think more than that, I think 23 videos last year on vectors and tensors. These are clear coincides, you can go to my channel Physics for Students and, and check out vectors and tensors. These two on the right hand side, these are for this year, I've just started revising the playlist so that you get uh, much more updated I would say videos on vectors and tensors. Either way, you can check out or you can take any book. There are many books available to uh, get a good concept of vectors. The most challenging part of the tensor learning comes when we use non-Euclidean differential geometry. And you can again go to my channel. There are a lot of videos on differential geometry. You can check it out. And very recently, this book uh, I would say this lesson, lesson number 13, contains what are the best books to study, how to study do's and don'ts and everything. It is in my playlist of differential geometry in physics for students, you can check out. So the left hand side are basically videos on the basics of differential geometry. Lesson 13 is a study guide on how to learn differential geometry. Apart from this, you can pick up any book for vector calculus, curl divergence, etc., multilinear algebra. Now we come to the central part of the video. Which book shall you read or what are the books uh, that you should read? Remember that in this part you will be coming across uh, quite a number of books but it is not that you have to purchase all of them. It is not that you need to read through all of them but it is a general overview on the tensors. What are the books you should read? Remember, there should not be information overload. Whatever the books you select, you can let me know. And there is a surprise waiting at the end of the video. So here we will cover up what are the books that you should read. Multiple books or maybe one book. But remember that you don't need to have all the books. The number of books given will give you a clear and a broader perspective. The first book, which is almost written in gold, I would say, would be Daniel Fleisch, Student's Guide to Vectors and Tensors. It has given an Amazon rating of 78%, which I think is quite underrated and it should go more than 90%. Here is Professor Daniel Fleisch. It is absolutely a great book. You can see uh, he starts with vectors. It is a self-complete book, so all the mathematics are related. Then it comes with vector operations, scalar product, cross product, etc. And then he finally goes into co contravariant and covariant tensor, higher rank tensor, tensor applications, all those things. So I can tell you that this is such a simple book that you can just pick it up, sit on sofa, relax with a cup of coffee and just go on reading it. You will get a complete idea of vectors and tensors. I would like to summarize this book with a few words that it is one of the best self-complete book easy introduction to tensors and it offers a clear explanation on just everything and nothing is left unsaid. It is a great introduction for anyone who needs to understand tensors. It first focuses on vectors and use vectors to build the general concepts and the text is very clear, well written and there are a lot of uh, diagrams. So the first book, Daniel Fleisch, Student's Guide to Vectors and Tensors. The second book would be G.E. Hayes, Vector and Tensor Analysis. This has also been given a 68% kind of a rating and you see here how he starts. So G.E. Hayes book, the best part is that it is again a self-contained book. It contains everything. If you don't understand the mathematics, don't worry. Professor Hay would teach you along this journey. So here are the elementary operations, definitions, dot, dot, dot. And then it comes to applications or into geometry. Uh, it then covers up, you see here, differential geometry. This is the part which has been covered, but not much, 51 to 58, 7 pages. Then it directly goes to motion to, of a particle, motion of a system of particles. It moves to partial differentiation. Here, the application of vectors to mechanics, that is important because until you understand the application is not, uh, uh, not, not complete. Partial differentiation, here you see on the right hand side what I was talking, the uh, Laplacian and the line integral, everything is given, even the Green's theorem, Stokes theorem, and then the tensor analysis starts with covariant, contravariant, uh, metric tensor, conjugate, the indices, everything. So what I can tell you is that it is an excellent introductory level text highly recommend i would recommend for sec somebody interested in an undergrad and this also come uh, you know come uh, it covers the 
Sadat Frenet formula for lines and spaces uh, in a very clear manner. So uh, those who understand uh, this uh, formula, you can understand that this sometimes become a little bit complex for Professor Hayes book has cleared up everything. So this would be another book on my series of recommendation. The third book would be by uh, Borisenko and Tarapov, Vector and Tensor Analysis with Applications. It contains a 74% rating and I wholeheartedly agree uh, the rating. Now this has got a typical kind of a approach. See, it starts with vector algebra and it builds up the base. So the entire part the beginning are on vector algebra, products of two vectors, scalar product, and then you see it starts with the tensor concept. So the authors give you a high order tensor, curvilinear coordinates, everything. So once the basic has been developed, then the tensor concept starts. Moving on, we see that the uh, writers have gone into tensor algebra. That means the operations of tensors, vector and tensor analysis, the field. And here you see the Gauss's theorem, Green and Stokes theorem has been covered with much details. Then the authors describe on the ramifications, the covariant, contravariant, equations to fluid motions, the Dirichlet and Neumann problems and related to applications into electromagnetic and maximal situation. Obviously, the maximal and the entire electromagnetism has been represented on the basis of tensor. So it is definitely a good book and I would like to tell you that it contains great illustration something like this you see that the ellipsoid and the symmetric tensor the cylindrical coordinates how it has been uh, it has been it has been illustrated so yes i would say it is an excellent book if you want to have clear ideas about the basic concept and it is written in a very coincise focus style uh, it is still valuable uh, even when the differential approach has changed and the section devotes to integral theorems uh, it is much more, uh, I would say, applicable to the current trends in mathematics than most of the classical texts in the other level. So yes, it is a wonderful book. I would say this is highly recommended. Okay, this book, I, I think this is uh, the second edition because the first edition, I don't remember, some, some other book written by Taha Sochi. And you can see that it has been given uh, more or less five star that's fine so the book contains a lot of details of tensor calculus so you see it has been defined the coordinate system transformation tensor type covariant contravariance isotropic tensors and then it further deals into contraction inner products spherical coordinates i would say each and every system so it has been segregated so you see four is special tensors 4.1 4.2 4.3 then comes with dot product 4.6.1 and the further illustration. So it is a well arranged book, uh, Taha Sochi, Principles of Tensor Calculus, definitely it's a very good book. The next book will be something which is related to physics. Now you see that I'm not dealing with books related to differential geometry, I'm just giving you a basic understanding of tensors. It is 78%, I think it is absolutely fine. And uh, this is the author Dwight E. Noin Schwander. I don't know whether I'm pronouncing the name correctly. So this book is basically how to apply tensors on physics. So it starts with Euclidean gradient, Euclidean vectors, theory of relativity most importantly, interestingly, inertia tensor because these are the classical uh, tensors which the author starts with. Next the author moves into these parts which are the electromagnetic stress tensor, uh, two index tensor, then the metric tensor is covered with utmost details. Uh, I mean, it's a relative motion, the, what we call the indices gymnastics, upper and lower tensor. Then it goes into derivatives, the affine connection, what is a curvature, the Riemann tensor, and then linearity, covariance applications, and as you see lastly, the tensors and manifolds, because without manifolds, how can we uh, expect physics? So, yes, this is definitely a good book on the tensors and calculus for physics. So it covers tensors and manifolds and tensors and multilinear forms. It also covers exterior derivative, integrals and differential form. Definitely it is a great book. I would like to summarize that after reading Daniel Fleisch books, it comes, uh, I would say, it is not that easy, but yes, it is an excellent book. Those who wants to learn and it is an excellent introduction to the mathematical tools for university level physics. Now we come to a book which is the differential geometry. This is called Textbook of Tensor Calculus 
and it is written by Dr. Prasun Kumar Nayak, uh, given a rating of 69% fine. But the differential geometry has been taught in such a simple manner that you won't face any problem. So first is tasked with stencil algebra, the entire part. Then it goes into the Riemannian metric and then to Christoffel symbols and covariant differentiation. So you will learn a lot of physics also into that part. The Riemannian geometry that starts with the differential part and then it goes into Einstein space, mean curvature, geometry space. I mean to say very detailed uh, curves on spaces, classical mechanics. You see here classical mechanics now starts. Newton's laws of motion, work done, and then it moves into inertial uh, frames of reference. So relativistic mechanics, and that's the beauty of the book because it contains a lot about physics, application of tensors uh, in general, as well as in relativity and differential geometry. The last book I would say would be Robert C. Rudd's Introduction to Vectors and Tensors. And this is the picture of Dr. Robert is given a five star rating, 72 percent. The beauty of this book is that it starts with the historical summary, right? Linear dependence and then moves into inner product, differentiation of vectors, introduction to Einstein, special theory of relativity. Then it goes into partial differentiation, line integrals, uh, uh, fundamental notions in space, geodesics. Uh, Levi-Civita connection, curvature tensor. So you understand that it covers a lot of physics part as well as the vectors and tensors. And then I would like to summarize that it is a great book for those who are interested. Explanations are rigorous and there are no errors. You will see that there are certain textbooks which contains errors. And the exercise are very well thought for the students. And the best element is that it tells about the application in physics and it is utilized in every chapter. So these are the highly recommended books which you can start with anyone and it will serve the purpose. Now the question is that how will you get those books? Very simple. What you need to do is that you can WhatsApp me or you can email me at this email ID because the books are very dense, heavy in terms of storage capacity. So I would like to share it in a Google Drive because it won't go as an attachment. You can WhatsApp me. You can ask me for suggestions based on your level. I can tell you which book to read or you can get all those books, but there should not be any information overload. That is very important. So this is how you can get those books and I will surely send it to you. And I have always been very immensely thankful to those who are watching the video. I would request you to subscribe to my channel Physics for Students. Click on the bell icon to get all the notification from Physics for Students. You can always write to me at this email ID contact.physicsforstudents at gmail.com. However, I have a separate channel uh, on YouTube which is related to general theory of relativity and here is the URL and you can follow me also on Facebook, Instagram or on LinkedIn. Thank you very much for watching this video. I think that I have been able to give you a clear guideline idea and suggest you some of the best books which will clear up all the confusion and make your journey on vectors and tensors smooth, enjoying and motivating. Please put up your comments and let me know how do you like and what are your suggestions. I will be soon back with more interesting video on physics or mathematics. Stay well, stay tuned and may God be with you.